Now then, we've got a mashed forklift battery charger and as you can see it's really mangled and I'm halfway disassembling it and I just thought I'd better just catch a quick bit of video So the transformer itself is quite interesting and it seems like it's not damaged and the rectifier has had a bit of aggression upon it but we might be able to straighten those fins out and that will remove any shorts. As you can see a lot of it was really quite, if that transformer has survived then we'll be doing well. And there's a couple of um, mains contactors there. I'm assuming they're mains, but they might not be because just the other side of those contactors, there's a little transformer. So you never can tell. So I'm going to continue with this disassembly. And hopefully at some point, we'll have this transformer and rectifier on the bench and put some power in it and see what happens. Hopefully you'll look forward to that. Now then, after that brief intro into the trials and tribulations of this potentially very nice uh, charger, we've got, we've got the transformer on its bottom plate at the moment. At some point, if we works out right, then I will unbolt this and straighten out this baseboard as it were, bottom plate, and then we can build a fresh box based on that. So we've got that, and I'll show you the rest of the stuff, which is sort of interesting. So let's just zoom round. So I've straightened out the rectifier, but one of the two, one or two of the many diodes have, um, I think the old fashioned phrases, have bought it. There's one there, and you see it's not even connected to there anymore. There's a couple like that, and as long as they're bent out of the way or cut off so they don't short out, we should be all right. So this is the beauty of having a large leg vise outside. You can put something like this in it in different angles and straighten things out. I mean, if you remember, some of these were bent so far over they were touching the next plate. So hopefully we'll test that and that will be it's either good or bad. And if it's bad, we can either identify which diode is bad or where the short is or I shall go up into the spares department and find another one. Perhaps not so heavy duty, but we'll find one. Now then, these contactors, remember I said I thought they might be mains. 24 volt AC, which means it'll run on 24 volt AC or 12 volt DC. That's the coil, not the contacts, that's the coil that operates everything. So we'll play with those later on. Now then, the transformer itself. Somewhere. I think it's the old side. There. Somewhere there's just a little graze. Where are we? There we are. Can you see that? So what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to varnish that. 
slap a load of varnish on there and let that dry and I will go round this and just look for any damage that's the only bit I can find which is remarkable really considering you saw how battered the um, the case was crushed anyway this is really quite an interesting transformer just take note because effectively there are two transformers there so let's just move forward and have a look at the uh, connection board so we've effectively got two transformers and there we are there's two 240 volt connections two 230 connections two 220 and then there's the zero volts W and the zero well W A W A W zero W zero so we can work this one through now then the interesting thing about this is when you follow the wires as I said there are two 24 volt transformers in here so what it means is we've got either we have a choice we've got one 24 volt charger giving X we've got two that could potentially give X times two running in parallel or we can wire the AC output of one transformer in series with the other one and get 48 volts so it's a medium sized 24 volt um, charger a heavy duty 24 volt charger or a 48 volt charger and who'd have thought it because you know all I did was just pick this up thinking that looks interesting and um, it turns to be more interesting than we thought right here's the other side that's a 240 volt tail to that one there and then a 240 volt tail goes down there and to there Okay, so the 230 volts, one goes there, one goes down there. 220, the same. Except that one has got two wires in it, and that one, oh, that's got two wires in as well. So there you go. So the zero goes along here and to there. The other zero goes down here, yep. So as you can see, there's two sets of separate connections. And then the output of that transformer here, which is there, connects with the output of that one and goes off. And again, the output there goes down there, connects with the output of that one and goes off. So it's it's a bit unusual in so much as this one is upside down relative to that one because the the high voltage coils is there and the high voltage coils are there and the fatter wired coils which is the output there and there so I'm just going to varnish that that scrape on that side I mean worst case scenario uh, we can dig in there let me just turn this round again. As I was saying, worst case scenario, we can just dig in there and prise those open. In fact, I might do that with this one. There, see? And then we can get more varnish in there. So I'm going to do that and then I'll come back to you. Whilst we're here, 
that's soaking in. This is on resistance, it's on the 200 ohms, so we'll go from the 240 there, okay, that is 1.1, 1.2, and this one here is 1.2. I think there was a very slight, yeah. So these effectively what are neutrals, they're not the same. WO and WA um, will affect the, the voltage out on the, D, on the uh, low voltage side. So if we go to... WA there's slightly more coils in there because there's 0.3 ohms uh, that's virtually a dead short but not quite just gives more opportunity for varying the um, output voltage not only have you got two choices of the neutral but you've got all these choices here between 242 30 220 okay so it really is quite flexible so I'm just starting to think about how I'm going to play around with this I think the thing to do is to put 240 volts in one of these and in the W0 and see what we get out and then put it in the WA and see what we get out. Right. Okay. So I've got the meter connected to those output tails there. And I've got the quick test there. So let's leave it at that. Okay, so We'll take that connection there and WO there and hopefully we can see the meter. Zoom in a bit. There we go. Prepare, prepare for uh, the lights going out. There we go. 30. Which is perfect for charging a 24 volt battery. So let's try WA. Disconnect that. There. I have to strip that out. There we go. Contact. Right, so that's less. So there you go. So you can adjust the uh, output current by choosing not only a, a um, live variable but we've got a neutral variable as well interesting so what we need to do now um, 
well, we're going to have to set it up with a rectifier and test it all, aren't we? So uh, I'll be back in a while. So it's another day. And let's just see if we can find, identify these damaged diodes. There's one. So I'm just going to cut that out of the way just so it doesn't get bent and create a short. Actually it only looks like there's one, two, and one's already missing. Right, okay. Now then, let's just test this rectifier and we'll stick the meter on continuity so between that AC and that DC we should get 40 445 and the other way round we should get nothing okay uh, where's the other DC out there's the other DC out so this way we should get 444 and the other way round we get nothing whoopee try the other AC nothing this is where all your your leads get tangled up 459 and then that way should be nothing and the other way round 461 so I would say that there's a possibility that that rectifies all right we have just here what looks like a capacitor and there's a couple of capacitors there so we'll leave those in place so I think at some point we can connect these AC low voltage AC lines to those AC and put that to that across a pair of batteries and see what happens which is great but interestingly these let's just zoom down a bit Four volt AC. Now, if you make your own charge controller, you probably end up running the circuitry on 12 volts. So you could have have the same 12 volts operating such things as this for connecting a dump load or a dump load across a turbine. 12 volt battery here. There you go. So that's pretty good. I suppose really what we ought to do is find out how much current it's drawing. Amps DC, um, that goes on there, that goes there. Doesn't matter which way. Can you see all this lot? Just about. So we've just got the meter in circuit. It's drawing two amps. That's quite a lot. I wonder what sort of resistor we could put in series with that to reduce that current. I didn't like that drawing two amps. That's quite a lot. 2.2. .2. So we need to put something in circuit with that. Here's a uh, an indicator bulb. One point one, and the bulb lights up. 
that would reduce the current and show that it's working. This is 47 ohms by the looks of it. Done like that. Still drawing. So I would say an indicator ball. If you wanted to use this, because that will, each one of those contacts in there, and there are four of them, should handle 30 amps. Let's just um, move this round, turn it upside down, put it like that. Hopefully you can see all that lot. There you go. And I've used bulbs in circuit before. They're almost like an electric clutch. So therefore um, it limits the flow of current and as long as the thing at the other end works all right, then if the thing at the other end, for instance, locks up like it's a motor or something like that, if it locks up, seizes up, or there's an impediment, rather than the motor burning out, the bulb just comes on. So there you go. We've halved the current, yeah, and we've added a fail safe. So hopefully there's a bit of learning involved in that. So there you go. Right, back to the the uh, project in question. I'm just going to go and set this up with a couple of batteries and I'll be back to you shortly. Okay, I've just briefly wired up the input to this transformer and the two low voltage AC cables are coming out there to the rectifier. And of course we need to see which is the positive and which is the negative. That's showing 41 volts now out but that's the positive okay so I'm just going to get this wired up somehow and I'll get back to you okay that negative there goes all the way around the houses and goes to that negative terminal there two 12 volt batteries in series that positive terminal there goes to there so and we've got the clamp meter which as you will see later on with another video except it doesn't want to play here I'll have to hold that it is very handy stand well back something's happening 14 amps okay going down as currents flowing okay so we'll leave that uh, we'll take that off how do we raise the current we adjust it on here so let's move that there to the 230 Okay, are we all with us? I think we are. Let's go back to There we go Contact There 
it's the same. Perhaps slightly more, but not a great deal. Okay, let's wire in two chargers together. So I've used both of the 230s there and I've used both of the W0s there. Those go to neutral, those go to live. So let's test this now. Contact. Twenty one. I can hear those batteries. Those batteries are fairly well charged already. So we've got twenty amps at twenty four volts. Um, let's go to the 220 and see what happens. Okay, I've just updated this system just to see how much of a, a load we can put on this. Basically, those batteries were fully charged. So when they're fully charged, as we all know, they don't create as much of a load. So I've used my favourite bit of nichrome wire that's drawing 20 amps out of those batteries okay so it's creating an extra load and I'm just going to increase or decrease the resistance so increase the load on that in a minute and then so we've got the voltmeter and we are with two chargers on the 220 input to the 0W I think it is yes so that's the best we can do out of this and that potential little area of a scrape there has had three coats of varnish on it so I'm just going to increase that load Where's the, here it is, you, better, you, you might want to see this, that's quite warm. At the moment it's drawing 20 amps, 19.9, so let's just get off and that's drawing 24 amps now okay so these batteries are obviously quite good because at 24 amps load they're still holding 24 and a half volts that's pretty good. I'm pleased about those batteries. Right, now then. I think we just need to be there. I'm just going to switch the charger on. Contact. And we're charging at, well, 50, 56, 54 amps. So that will really produce some current when it's required. So if you've got really flat batteries, that will really well work well from a generator. It'll probably want a cooling fan on it. But there you go. And look down here. There we go. Now the volts has gone up. How much current is that drawing? Thirty-eight. 
31 amps. So there you go. Yeah. Batteries are a variable load depending upon how charged or discharged they are. I'm just going to switch stuff off before it starts getting rather hot. But definitely, if you wanted to run that with a generator, this as a charger, you'd want a fan on it. Especially if it was running for quite a while. But there you go, proof of concept yet again. So hopefully you found that interesting. Um, I'm sure we can make a 48 volt battery charger out of this if we needed to. At the moment I don't need one. I've got two as it goes but you know, looking at this it's one of those things you can't resist to have a go and play with. I think it would really make a really quite an amazingly good um, backup charger from a generator or something like that. So we shall leave it at that. Um, if you're a new viewer please subscribe and if you've uh, found this interesting uh, please make a comment. Lots of comments would be great and uh, give it the old thumbs up, thumbs up obviously just to help things along. I will um, if I do some more on this and start building a body round it and putting an amp meter in it and all that sort of thing maybe a voltmeter I will bring you back on that but at the moment it's do I build it as a 24 or do I build it as a 48 because so we've got a 48 volt system but we've got enough battery chargers so this is probably put to one side when somebody's desperate catch up with you soon cheers for now